1966 Ford Thunderbird coming up next on Monster Hobbies What's in the Box? Hello once again everybody, welcome back to another Monster Hobbies What's in the Box and today we're going to be looking at a sophisticated sports car from 1966 as we open up the lid on this amazing 1966 Ford Thunderbird by AMT Ertl. Now this kit has seen a lot of reissues back in the past, like this one. <laughs> And I've bought quite a few of them because they are a fun kit to build. Not so fun to try to put back on the box, big box, when you're trying to film a other video. But anyway, let's not forget to like, subscribe and share this video with all our friends and family so that if they're into these great, big, awesome Thunderbirds, they will be able to find it easily. Don't forget to pound the notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are one of the first ones to see it. Let's get this thing up to 100 likes. And without further ado, let's take a look at the last of this body style Thunderbird as we go down and open up the lid on this amazing model kit. In 1964, Thunderbird underwent its fourth body change with neat, crisp styling as compared to the more rounded 61 series. In 1965 and again in 66, the Thunderbird was updated with many unique features that are now standard on many cars of today. So today's review is actually going to be two reviews in one. We're going to take a look at the um, Street Custom 66 Ford Thunderbird by RC2, as well as the earlier release of the 66 Ford Thunderbird by AMT Ertl. And the reason why I'm doing it like this this time is because I've actually built on both of the kits and I do not have a fresh out of the box example. So without further ado, let's actually crack the lid open on the Street Custom. And oh, wait, but before we do, <laughs> let's take a look at the side of the box here. And as you can tell, this is your uh, your typical RC2 style artwork, just a picture of the model, as well as some pictures of the interior and a side shot of the car. Of course the engine. Then if we turn it over, we just get a basic view of the side of the box. On this side, we've got the 66 Street Custom. This edition came out in 2006. And it's a skill level 2 kit, ages 10 and up, glue and paint required. And then of course the back end of the box. And what we'll do is we'll also take a look here at the AMT Ertl Thunderbird box. Now if you turn this one on its side, you get a lot more information. For example, it says it's a two-door, four-seater luxury convertible coupe front engine rear wheel drive the engine is a 90 degree overhead valve v8 gt390 390 cubic inch which is 6.4 liters a 4.05 bore and a 3.78 stroke 335 horsepower at 2800 rpm options dual four barrel holly carburetor transmission is a three-speed cruise matic automatic the wheels are 15-inch stamped steel with deluxe five-spoke wheel covers. Exterior options, removable hardtop rear wheel skirts, and over 90 parts, full-color decals, and paint and cement not included. So there you get to see the nice car on the grid. And turn the box up, of course, the front of the grid, and then, so on this side we get a nice rear three-quarter upper overhead type shot of the Thunderbird. There's the optional removable hard top, and those nice wheel covers, and there's a picture of the detailed interior. So you can see quite a change in box art style between the two boxes. That one versus RC2. So what we'll do is we'll first off crack open the lid of the RC2 one and see what's happening inside. So what I'll do is I'll get into the instructions in a minute here. Let's just take a look at the two plastic models that I've got. 
So first off, we've got some nice chrome going on here. Then the interior components. The engine and firewall, and we even have a reel-to-reel -reel tape deck in here. We have the wheels and fender skirts. An interior tub. The roof. Two hoods. One is custom and one is stock. We'll get into that in a minute. We have the body. Now this one I've, I've added to. These are the custom pieces inside here. So you get a raised uh, rear fender line as well as the rear turn signals or tail lamp housing I should say and anyway so there's the body the one pan under under chassis here the custom front grille it's interesting to note the custom pieces on this kit were designed by George Barris however on AMT's now discontinued 64 kit they were done by the Alexander brothers says so on the old vintage boxes. <laughs> so there's the steering wheel in a bag, um, the rear or the wheels and some of the clips. And we've got a bag with our tires and tail lamps. Sandpaper you do not get included in the kit. Oh I got an extra hood here. I think that's from probably the older model. Uh, a seat belt dashboard Let's get a piece of plastic this number one deck all that's not part of the kit that actually came from a 44 I believe there's the front um, uh, stock roll pan now this is from the trophy series this is uh, a bunch of trophies and plaques and things to display your model with what other goodies are in here. And these are special tools that came with that series as well. The putty and sandpaper. There's a renegade bucket seat. And then we have some license plate decals. So now I'm just going to switch to the other model. And now here's the earlier version. The original version actually came out in 1966 by AMT out of Dearborn, Michigan. <laughs> but anyway, so as you can see, I've gone further on this kit. Uh, now here's the stock body, and I've glued the fender skirts in. I've also added in, here, let's just move this for a minute, the strips of styrene here for better fit of the hood, which we'll get into in a little bit. There's my interior tub painted engine getting together undercarriage there's a uh, disc brake that came from another kit but I've added it in here because I wanted this as a display model now let's just move this back again so we've got our hard top there the convertible up top whoops renegade glass going everywhere so here's the parts tree for the chrome as it came out of the box uh, that's our renegade glass, <laughs> an old blue printer subscription form. There's some work dashboard and all that stuff. So basically what's in this kit is what is left. Oh, here's a piece. I don't know if this was part of this or something else. But there's a license plate with the Barris crest on it and a roll bar, squared off roll bar, as well as these two lock clips. So that is our look at that. Now let's go over and see the instructions. And here we have our instruction sheet for our 66 Ford Thunderbird. This is the same to both uh, kits. And we're treated with this nice image of the Thunderbird logo as well as a side profile of the car itself. And as we open this up a panel, we get this amazing write-up with everything you ever needed to know about the Thunderbird, but we're afraid to ask including the fact that it had an AM 8-track tape player system known as Stereosonic 
that added a quality of sound and reliability unmatched by previous record playing systems for automobiles. Anyway, cool stuff like that. The next panel we have here is of course the important information saying, before you begin to assemble your model kit, study the instructions carefully and check to be sure you have received all the parts that you will need. And that's going to be interesting considering that this is a double kit review of the same kit. <laughs> Here's our recommended tools, a hobby knife, tweezers, and a brush. And then to carry on this panel, we get our building tips for the advanced modeler. Uh, there's the RC2 logo, 2006. So let's just open this up to our first panel right here, which of course shows our engine assembly. It says a stock and custom sub-assembly. Smet both half uh, smet both engine block halves, oil pan, and the intake manifold cylinder head assembly together as shown in paint Ford Blue as a unit. Smet both valve covers to the intake manifold cylinder head assembly. So here, of course, you see we get our left and right hand sides of the engine block half, as, as well as the transmission molded in place. There's the oil pan with the notch in it for our axle, metal axle to go through. There's the intake manifold and cylinder head assembly. The two valve covers, which are chrome plated. And as we move down a panel, we have our engine block, the continuation. There's the air cleaner going in the overflow tank for your radiator, your left and right hand side manifolds, and the entire engine generator and fan belt pulley assembly is one piece. There's the fan. And then down here we have this amazing custom version where you can put on two four barrel carburetors, these velocity stacks, and then the rest is just the same stock parts as before. Step number two, we get into our roof assembly. We have the hardtop roof, the rear window, and the two Landau irons. The Landau irons are stock items which may be used as an option on the custom version. There you go. Coming over into panel three, we get part of our wheel assembly. Just a little more down the page here. Here we get our outer wheels, the Firestone tire, and the inner wheels, which paint flat black. That's for the stock front wheel assembly, and the rear wheel assembly is the same. Okay, then we'll just move this up. Here's the mild custom front wheel assembly. You get a Baby Moon hubcap, an open wheel ring, the Firestone tire, and the wheel back. Same as for the back there. And then our wild custom, you get these nice outer wheels a Goodyear Eagle VR50 tire, so this is more a uh, modern addition to the kit. And then our wheel backs, and the same with the back again. Hmm. Panel 4 shows our chassis assembly. Uh, the chassis, of course, is one big flat pan in this. The uh, wheels get put on. There's a metal axle that goes between the two and then it goes in through your oil pan on your engine block and the battery pops into the, the inner fender apron right there. <laughs> okay, then we get into our interior assembly. And here we have the, the back of the bucket seat and the front gluing together with the lap belt. That's pretty much consistent for your mild and wild or your stock and your mild custom and then here we have the wild custom front bucket seat which is a different type of bucket seat with the lap belt going in here then there's our interior again molded as a bucket which is typical for this era the front custom buck seat bucket seats popping in here there's our dashboard you get a tachometer and a steering wheel and a shifter. Both of these pieces here are plated. And then in step six, which is a bit longer, we have our body assembly. And this shows the interior bucket completed going in. Windshield first, then the firewall, your radiator support gluing in here, and then the bucket dropping in. And you'll note that this is a peg and post style of car. This uh, might have come out as a promotional originally. It could be used for slot cars. 
Okay, we get into a very big, big panel here. This is the final assembly with your fender skirts gluing on the sides and then the stock tail lights. Now these tail lights had the lights that would go flash here and then there and then there when you made your turn signals. And there's the backup light going in the center of the transparent red panel. Okay, and then here, this is the stock assembly of course. You're getting a license plate decal going onto the back there. Uh, you'd have to scrape off the molded on 1966, it's in there. Okay, and then we get into this panel here where it shows the stock car going all together. There's a license plate deck all here that glues into a license plate frame, which goes on your front body pan. The entire front grille is chrome with these plated headlights that all glue in here. There's your hood with a little hood trim. You get these fender ornaments pop in. Um, the rear view mirror and of course your hood which you don't have to glue on there so you can take it off and show everybody the insides. And then we get down to our custom panel. This of course is designed by George Barris even though the 64 edition said the Alexander Brothers so I don't know it might be either one of these guys. But anyway this is that taillight housing, the rear taillights and the chrome bumper. They all go in there. And then over here is our final panel. We have the body going together. So you get a custom hood here with the point goes all the way to the front. The uh, grill housing, the optional grill insert if you want chrome in there. The your two rectangular headlights and the rectangular headlight panels. A tape recorder. Uh, two jacks and um, side mirrors and antennas and this is that rear fender trim that glues on there just to get the height of this up to make it a little more uh, more jet like I, I imagine so those are the instructions for the 66 Ford Thunderbird so now we're going to take a look at the two bodies side by side now keep in mind that I've I'm building one of these as a stock 1966 Thunderbird and this one as the custom George Barris Alexander Brothers type of Thunderbird for the era. Now this one has a lot of customizing features that were on there and uh, a lot of cues of the mid to late 60s customizing features. So first off, let's just move this one out of the way. Oh wait, before we do that. You can see the difference in the hoods. This one's hood scoop just comes up into here and then there's the chrome piece for the Thunderbird going on. Whereas this one, the, uh, the hood goes up to this point right up here. And it's not really much of a scoop, but more, of, more sort of like along the lines of a Pontiac. But the scoops are here in the hood, recessed in. So a bit of difference in that custom hood. So now let's move the custom out of the way and concentrate on the stock version. So here we have our stock 66 Thunderbird. And as you can see, we've got the emblem here uh, for the Thunderbird and the aforementioned hood. One thing that's nice about the convertible is that they actually did put in the sun visors in here. So that's a good thing. I'm just going to remove the hood. Oh. Uh, before I do that, actually, there's one thing I had to do in this kit, and that was to add in a piece of styrene strip right along here, just to close up the gap in the hood, because it was quite severe. Uh, so you can see it more there. I also added in a strip of styrene underneath, in the fenders, and that's just to prevent the hood from falling back backwards into the car. I'll show you more of that on the custom. So here we have our peg and post style again up in the front. You could mount this on a slot car chassis if you'd like. Uh, there's a, a little piece in here for a firewall to fit in. More of the posts for the interior. There are some mold marks back here which can be taken out with your number 16 hobby blade. But as you can see the side of the body is quite crisp. You got a Thunderbird script back here, the door handles. And, of course, the door going down. Notice that line cut down here into the fenders? That's actually how they mount on the car. Uh, 
across the back, there would have been a 1966 pressed in here, but I did scrape it down. Got rid of it with that number 16 hobby blade. You get your fuel door here, as well as your fender skirts, which are separate in the kit, but I've glued them on in here. Uh, I glued one of them on. The other one seems to have disappeared. <laughs> so that's how it would look out of the box. And then, of course, with your fender skirt on. So you can see quite a difference there. There's a nice grill right in here, as well as the windshield wipers. So very nicely molded, considering the vintage of the kit. And now let's move over here and bring our custom back. So, oops. As you can see, once I finish fighting, <laughs> there is a gap right in there. So the hood is a little bit tighter. That's why I put the evergreen styrene in the other one. Let's just see how the stock hood fits on there. Yeah, see, so notice the gap. The gap is quite large there. So filling it in with some styrene is obviously a, a big help. Okay, so here's the body now with the uh, optional fender moldings up there. So you can see how it comes and jumps up quite a bit, almost a Coke bottle shape. There we go. And of course we got our rear sunken custom tail lamps in there. There's the 1966 on the bumper. Focus in on that. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I did sand down the Ford emblem that was on the trunk lid there, make a little more smoother aerodynamic type of thing. I have also removed the Thunderbird script off of here, the door latches, because in the 60s the solenoid switch was quite uh, quite new with customizers, so you would have the car open remotely. There's one feature that I didn't quite do on this. See down here at the back of the door, there's a rounded corner. They were also rounding the front here in the customizing days. I did fill in the um, the line going down here. Or maybe I cut it in on the other one, I can't remember. But it's gone to be smoothed out. And I'll give it more of a sleek look. And uh, that is basically your body right there. Now the next components we have are the hoods. So again, there's a custom one in the stock. I already talked about the tops of the hoods, so I'm just gonna turn them over here, like that. And now you can see the, the differences. This, they both, of course, have the fireproof matting underneath, which is nice. There are some of those round sink mark things that could be filled with your, uh, or Sand it down with your number 16 hobby blade, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, here we've got the little brace for the chrome trim that goes in there. And then you can see the scoops underneath here, just as bulges. So they're, they're sort of fake scoops, they don't go in through the hood or anything. However, the detail here is still quite nice. The next piece up is our vinyl top. This is a hard top convertible type of roof. So you can see the straps in here. And there is also a vinyl pattern molded in place. It does have a nice chrome along the back here, just like the original. And then if we turn this over, you can see that there are some old buttons that need to be taken down with your number 16 hobby blade. But how does this piece fit onto the body? Well, I'll just bring back in the convertible. And as you can see, it does have a nice fit. Uh, just put my finger on there. There is a minimal gap between the roof and the top. Oops, of course I moved it out of the way a little. There we go. So, as you can see, it will fit quite nicely. A lot better than the gap in the hood. And it will look quite nice on your model. Next up we have our custom grill for the custom version. And as you can see, there is a grill pattern in here. And how does it fit to our body? Well, that's why I left the body down here. There goes the hood. So there is a bit of a trick to putting this together with the car. My suggestion is to put glue along here in the inner pieces. 
and then along there somehow. <laughs> okay, now you might need filler. Actually, you're definitely going to need filler if you want to blend the, the sides of this grill into the front fenders, just so this doesn't stick way out like it does, but is more subtle like the rest of the curves inside of the car. So not maybe not the best finish for this thing, but still it would make a nice little addition to your custom. Next up we have the chassis of the two kits. And the top of course shows what it's like when it comes out of the box. And the bottom is after I painted it and added some detail, like the drum brake in the rear and the disc in the front. These have come from other kits. So I I think they're, one of these is in this kit, but I, I can't remember of course because well, I've opened up the kit and moved stuff around. But anyway, so let's just move this out of the way. Oh, before we do, there's the uh, disc brake, or sorry, the drum brake in the back and the disc in the front. And of course, I've got the engine block in here. Don't quite know why it's black, it should be blue. But anyway, there it is. And of course, our fender aprons, which this should also be painted black, I do believe. Okay, moving this out of the way. So this is our undercarriage. And as you can tell, there's some nice detail. The gas tank and part of the trunk lid in there. Everything is all molded as one piece. And it does have the holes on the side for lowering or raising up the body. And there's all the nice ribs in here, little pieces. And the front steering. Their front suspension is all as one piece, molded onto this chassis. And again, there's more evidence of the peg and post. There's the hole right there. Would have had a screw in there. So this may have been a promotional as well at one point in time. This AMT was making a lot of promotional model kits as well as glue togethers. And of course there's our inner fender aprons with the wires and stuff molded in place. And Pretty basic, but it does get the job done. And next up we have our sprue with the engine components as well as the firewall. And there is quite a bit of flash which will have to be cleaned up. There's that roll bar and our reel-to-reel -reel tape deck. This could be good in dioramas or even glued into the interior of the car, maybe on the back seat. There's our engine block with the axle hole going through for the metal axle, the oil pan, the air cleaner. The uh, intake manifold as well as your cylinder heads. There's the license plate with the Barris logo on it. Your radiator, your fan, your exhaust manifolds, little clips to hold in the interior. Although you notice they've kind of been sealed up into this thing here. So you could cut them off and drill them out, file all this down, get it nice and flat. There's the power brakes right there. The big master cylinder booster and the brake itself or the uh, the reservoir okay turning this over you can see some nice detail on the radiator although this is quite a small radiator <laughs> there see how the discs are so you'd have to figure a way to cut them out and file it all down and everything but you could still use them and the battery looks pretty nice as well so there's those components next up we have our wheel components there's the wheel backs, all four of them. The metal axle will go through there. And then these are those inserts for your custom wheels with the Baby Moon hubcaps. And these are the fender skirts. So I'll just turn these over for you. Let's see the nice detail. Now, when you look at the wheels, they have the correct bolt pattern going on, as well as the, the front spindle. So these are the front wheels. That would be your cap going on there. And then uh, the back has the plugs. That, of course, is for the uh, rear differential. So very accurate. And if you look, there's the rings, which would give you your reversed chrome wheels. Sort of the idea there. And of course, on this brew, we also have some rings to clip things in underneath. And these are hood hinges, which you can also put into your car. Now here we have our interior components of our 66 Ford Thunderbird and I'll show you the seats for the front in a few minutes. But as for now we have this nice interior tub 
our dashboard and our steering wheel. And we'll just take a closer look at the interior tub for right now. You can see those nice rounded seats, which are very, very much uh, 66 Thunderbird special pieces. The side paneling here is not quite as bad as the 66 Galaxy kit. The door handles are a little bit soft, but they don't have that kind of drag down the sides as the uh, Galaxy kit did. There is some nice tuck and roll kind of pleating going on in there. There is a nice carpet down below. There are a few little mold marks here and there, but it does have the accurate automatic pedals molded in. There's a nice centered console as well, and you can see the clips on there. Underneath, not too much problems with mold marks or anything, so this will drop right onto that chassis. There is a little hole here for a gear stick lever. should be drilled out so that you can put a shifter down below. And then we'll take, take a look here at our dashboard. You can see the nice detail, even though the, the lights... there we go. See the nice detail on the dash with the instrument panels and all that kind of cool thing. And then there's our 8-track right there for that Ford sound. And there is a Thunderbird logo right there on the glove box door. And then finally, we we'll take a look at our little steering wheel, which does have the correct sort of safety features for the Ford. The arms of the wheel are back, and I do believe this is supposed to be... Well, it's a horn, of course, but I think it's also supposed to be padded in case you uh, go into the center of your steering wheel. So now let's take a look at those seats. And here we have our collection of seats that they give you in this kit. As you can see, there are two that are stock and four that are custom. The uh, four here will glue into these seat backs. Now these two here match the interior of the rear of the car. These ones are more of your mild customs, and these ones are your racing or wild custom seats. So I'll just bring these up to the camera. You can see the, the nice detail in here. It's like a waffle texture. And these ones are just straight lines that come down. And then these are a combination of some straight lines and then that leather padding that goes on there. And our seat backs, well, they are quite nice. It does cover the hole here when you glue in these inserts. And then, of course, the bucket seats are quite nice. There is a little bit of uh, plastic stuff on there that you will have to sandpaper out to make these nice and smooth. But there are your options for your seats. Oh, and one other thing to note, this kit also gives you seat belts. I don't know where the other one went to, but there's one of them anyway. Now, just as a side note, this is a painted interior. And when you go to paint yours, you will have to paint this top of the car in the color that your body is in, uh, because that is, of course, the way they were on the real Thunderbird. And I also wanted to show you the seat here, how nice it can be with a bit of, uh, oops, a bit of bare metal foil going around the edges. And that's how it would have been on the real car. So you can see how nicely the chrome pops out once the seat is in the bucket. Now we get into my favorite element of all the model kits, and of course that is the chrome tree. And the chrome on this tree is very nice, as you can see. There's no ripples or wrecks and runs in it. Now here's our front grill. This, of course, you can add some Nuln oil into, give it a nice wash, and wipe off the top. One thing about it is here's the front piece that goes underneath onto the front bumper. And this piece fits nicely, as you can see there. There's no gaps to it. Uh, and the bumper, of course, covers where it connects to the body. So, pretty nice. Then we've got our stock wheel covers. There's our Baby Moon hubcaps and the Wild Wire type wheels. These almost look like they'd be off a of Ferrari or something. Here, I'll just bring this up to the camera. You can see the nice wires and the bolt pattern. Again, using your Nuln oil, you can give it a bit of a black wash in there. There's the stock hubcaps, looking nice. Then in here, this area here, we get all our other chrome bits. The valve covers, the carburetors, antennas for the custom, the little carburetor tops for the 
uh, custom again. These are the bottoms of the jack stands, I do believe, and that would be the top. There's the chrome V for your uh, vents on that hood there. There's the gear stick lever, the front headlights, little side mirrors. There's the front headlights for the stock version. And there's the custom grill right in there. And this one, you could actually put some clear red, because those are your tail lights, into there. And then the black known oil in there. And there's the rear bumper across here. And then the stock rear tail lights with those in, uh, intermittent type flashers and your Landau irons across the top for the for the roof. So again, very nice chrome on this model kit. And here we have our glass components. You get, of course, the front windshield and the rear window for that top, as well as the square headlights and this nice transparent red rear taillight assembly. Next up, we get these nice rubber tires. They're actually vinyl, but these are the old Firestones that you can find going all the way back to the 1932 Ford kits. And these here are the Goodyear Rally GTs. They are approximately the same height. And we, of course, get two metal axles down at the bottom. Now these Goodyear Rally GTs are kind of nice. They've got that cool tread on them. These almost remind me of like off-road tires. However, they are a custom type of tire that was popular back in the 60s. And of course, looking at our old Firestones, you could put a big white wall on here, or a narrow one, sort of a 60s style. They do have the pie plate type sidewalls, as well as the very easy tread. <laughs> it's just basically a bunch of straight lines going all around the tire. These ones are really shiny. I should uh, put them aside for something special. And here is our decal sheet for the 66 Thunderbird convertible. We have two plates from Virginia and two from Ohio. For Virginia, we have In Style and 66 Bird. And for Ohio, we have Thunder and Fly By, Flying By as the license plates. Now here's another chrome tree that is really cool. Came with the customizing series kits. Of course, this Thunderbird was part of that back in the mid 80s. These are all different trophies that you can display with your model. And these little discs are actually the feet for these posts that have holes in them so that you could actually put a piece of thread through there and have it as a little wired off section for your model. This is an easel and there was a decal in that um, customizing series that actually would say 1966 Ford Thunderbird and have a bunch of details that you put on there. And then, of course, from the 80s, one of the trophies is a 86 Corvette. <laughs> oh, and this here is the leg for the back of that easel. And if I just turn this over, if you will permit me to turn it over, you can see the nice detail on the bases of those stands. And then here, of course, is a 32 Ford trophy, which of course is another very nice component. I'll just turn it around there so you can see. And that is the cool parts of this model kit. And of another final piece to that customizing series, which made an appearance in this model, are these tools. Now these are various different tools. Of course, you've got some plastic tweezers in here. These go together, and what you do is you put a piece of sandpaper, and you wrap it around these two things. And then you piece this together with the holes going into the pegs, and that becomes a sanding stick. And these are various different tools for your putty. For, of course, putting the putty into uh, the surfaces. Now they all look good and smooth on this side, but as you can see again, we've got a few mold marks. But on these tools, they're easy to get at. You will need to, of course, uh, sandpaper them down, make them nice and smooth when you want to use it for your putty. But it is pretty cool that they included these tools from, again, the customizing series. And finally, I thought I'd show you my custom Ford 66 Thunderbird that I built when I was a kid back in the 80s. You know, when Menudo was a thing. <laughs>
Anyway, I used the custom hood, as you can tell, and I painted this nice blue stripe on there, masked it out. It's quite new to modeling, so it was quite the thing. Now, just under the hood here, we of course have our blue motor with a green um, brake reservoir, which is very bizarre. Uh, there's a the flat black, and as you can see, like if you look, right here I painted this all black and you can see that like with the red interior that that would have matched the white on the body color a lot better if I had have known at the time. Now I used these wheels on the side I think they came from like a Dukes of Hazard kit or something if I remember correct and then you can see that front panel glues underneath on the chrome very nicely and uh, there are the old screw holes for of course in the back to put this thing together that would have been of course with the old peg and post promo style and there's our tail lights going across the back and my 111111 license plate that's painted with a brush way back in the day before i mastered my skills of course so there is the 66 thunderbird with the customized features and that completes our look at the AMT 1966 Ford Thunderbird. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this great review of this amazing 1966 Ford Thunderbird. Because Thunderbirds are exciting. And next week, don't forget to join us for another great unboxing of another 1966 car from who knows which manufacturer. Haha, <laughs> you will have to like, subscribe, and share pound that notification bell and when you get the notice of what the new car will be for next week it'll come up in your YouTube mail out feed <laughs> all right let's get this video up to 100 likes so that everybody can find it and until next time happy model building